we took our kids down to Death Valley a couple of years ago, and um, we did it at like two in the morning, and it was kind of hot down there. And 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 this guy was going through this desert, and he got really thirsty because he didn't have any water. You ever been thirsty? I'm thirsty now, but the, the, we got we got into this desert, and he was so thirsty. And he got up to this place. He saw this little shack, and he was like, "Is that a mirage or not?" And he gets up to the shack, and he gets to the door, and there's a guy in this shack, and he says water please water please this old man he comes out and he um he says to him would you like to buy a tie the guy's like you didn't hear me i said water please water please i'm thirsty i'm dying i need water and the guy says well well sir there's no water here but there's a little shack just down the road uh about two kilometers you can make it there there's water so he's like confused and he's like wondering whether it's dehydration or whatever but he crawls his way the two kilometers in the direction that this guy said and he gets to that he doesn't know how he gets that little shack and he knocks on the door and barely can get out the words you know i'm dying i need water and the guy that comes to the door looks just like the guy from the other shack and he looks at me, it could have been his brother. And he says, may I help you, sir? He's dressed in a tuxedo and very nice in this little old shack, you know. The guy gives water, water. And the man in the tuxedo replies and he says, oh, sir, I'm sorry, but you can't come in here without a tie. Now, have you ever felt like that in your life? Like you're so thirsty for the things of God and somehow you get to the door and you, and you say, I water, I'm dry. And you get some sort of an answer that disqualifies you from having your thirst quenched. Well, I can tell you, God is not the guy at the door trying to keep you out because you don't have a tie on. And because you missed buying the tie at the last place. And the coulda, shoulda, woulda. And if I had my life to do over, I would have bought the tie. I would have done something differently out there. Can I tell you that God is a God who has living water flowing for every single one of us in this new year, 2016. And this is a word for us as we are here contemplating what 2016 will look like. Well, we knew what 2015 looked like when we got to the close of it. We could go back and we could say, wow, there were some really great things and there were some really not so great things. But can I tell you, I'm thirsty for more love to love the unlovely. I am thirsty for more forgiveness for those who have wronged me. And I'm thirsty for more power to heal the sick to raise the dead, to set the captive free. I'm thirsty for more hope to give to the hopeless. I'm thirsty for more wisdom to navigate difficult situations. I'm thirsty for more understanding to know the heart and the mind of Christ. I'm thirsty for an increased anointing to preach the word with greater authority. I am thirsty for the living water today. Anybody else with me? You know, we closed out this past year with a great opportunity to serve the living water in cups of coffee and plates of food. We had, uh, the other night, there were 49 people experiencing uh, homeless homelessness in our lobby, in our sanctuary, in our nursery, in our fellowship hall. We had them all over this building. We had families here for one week. And here's what Jesus said. If somebody is thirsty and you give them a cup of cold water in my name, you have done it unto me. If they're hungry and you give them something to eat, you have done it 
as unto me. If you give them clothing, if you give them a place to stay, you have done it as unto me. For this past week, we've been serving up the living water. But I can tell you personally, when you serve the living water, sometimes you get thirsty yourself. You, you, your physical body gets drained. Your spirit, you've given everything. You left it all in the field. But I'm here to tell you today that there is a river of living water. No matter where you are, what you're going through, there is a river of living water that is here to satisfy your thirst. And he's not holding it back. This concept of living water is something that is all the way through the Bible. You know, this year, I want to start with the end in mind. And so as I finished out last year reading the book of Revelation, and then I started reading Genesis, you know, across the week here, I looked at the, there, there's a continuity. Can you imagine that? The God, the creator of this universe, put continuity in the Bible from the beginning to the end. Isn't that amazing? It was not an accident. And so we, we look at Revelation chapter 21. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and, and turn there to Revelation chapter 21. And I'm going to read verse 6 and 7, and then we're going to look at Revelation chapter 22 and read a couple of verses there. In Revelation 21, verses 6 and 7, he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost. From the spring of the water of life, those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. He's talking here about the new heaven, the new earth, the new Jerusalem, Jerusalem, blah, 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 blah. Jerusalem. My son was trying to say that word last night as we were reading his Bible story. And he's like, finally, he just, he, he just quit it. He said, I know what the word is, but I just can't say it. Must be like son, like father. But we have the new Jerusalem, this whole amazing utopia that God has for us that we are heading towards and he describes it at the end of the book and then he says oh by the way you're not there yet and I'm going to show you this living water that I speak of I'm going to show you glimpses of it all along your way I want to encourage you today that we're not in heaven yet we might be by the end of the year who knows but we are in a place where God is revealing his living water to you and, you and you and you and you and you and you and you. Every one of us, he is revealing that. What does that look like for us to have eyes to see it? I'm heading to a place where there is a, a king that is over all, a king who has unlimited power, and he reveals himself in my day and in my age. This concept here is called the already, but the not yet. Everybody say kingdom of God. We are heading towards a heavenly kingdom with that river of life, with the new Jerusalem. But yet we live in a place called time and space and earth. And so when we pray, your kingdom come and your will be done, we are in the, it's already, yes, but it's not yet. Does that make sense? It's it, the fullness of what we are to be experiencing, that river of life, the quenching of our thirst, will ultimately be fulfilled when we cross over Jordan and enter those pearly gates. But today, we got to still live here, amen? So with the hope of that, what can we experience today? What can we expect to experience today that will allow us to bring living water to other people? See, I can tell you about the living water that is to come. I can preach about that. 
Now that might give you some hope. Well, in the sweet by and by, everything's gonna be okay. I mean, if you look at our at our songs and our music over the eras, there were certain eras where the sweet by and by was just like, God just somehow get my mind out of this mess and let me think about heaven. And if I bury my head in the sand long enough, all this pain won't really matter. I will live in denial until Jesus takes me home. Glory, hallelujah. But I believe that the era in which we live in the already but the not yet is a place where, yes, we have hope for what is to come, but we can experience the living water here today for the thirst that I have right now. What does that look like? Eden is restored in Revelation chapter 22. Look at verse, uh, at verse 17 here. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. And let the one who is thirsty, come. And let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. Aren't you glad that salvation is free? But I'm here today to tell you that it will cost you everything. It's the free gift that costs you everything. You receive it freely. There is nothing that you can do to deserve the gift of salvation. And if you think you deserve it, guess what? You don't have a clue about this gift. Because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, if we receive this gift of freedom for the quenching of our thirst, we then in exchange for that, give him everything that is called us. We surrender. The good, if there is any. The bad, which there's usually plenty of. And the ugly, which I'm not going to discern which is which, but we give it all to him. There's three things here out of this passage. Have you ever felt disqualified from the river of life? I, I'm too bad. I've done too much. I've strayed too far. We go into all these condemning things. Here I go again. I do it over again. God, no, I'm not worthy. Spurgeon says this about this passage. Now, he was referring to, if you have the King James, I believe the word whosoever is used in this passage. And he says that there are only three things that qualify you for this free gift. One, that you're thirsty. And he says, have you heard? Anybody hearing my voice today? Then you qualify there. The second one is, if you're thirsty. Anybody thirsty for more of God? Then you're qualified. And then it says, the one who desires or whosoever desires or whosoever wants it can take the free gift. So if you're thirsty, you hear the word and you want it, guess what? Do you ever get those publishers clearinghouse things, you know, in the mail or the or things? You may have won. I was talking with a fellow recently, and he was absolutely sure that this one was going to be the one where they came with the check. It, it had to happen. I have already won. It said it right here. If I just mail this in, I've already won. get another letter. It's the next time. It's the next time. It's the next time. That's not the way God does this. He says, if you want it, it's yours. Just come and claim the free gift from the water of life. Dip in and drink. I remember a time when I was uh, really thirsty. We were actually backpacking in Europe right after we got married, and we had these little charcoal pens just in case for emergency, you know, you, you were supposed to be able to sip sewer with them. I'm not sure I would have been like, like 
on with that. But we had them as emergency things. If we ever got without water and we couldn't find water, well, we were in a place where we couldn't find water in this in this town. And there was a uh, there was a like a fountain in the middle of the town. Who knows what was in that fountain? I have no idea. I mean, people anyway. But I was so thirsty. I whipped out that pen and I was like. I'm, I'm using it in a straw right in, that, right in that thing. Now, it was free water. I wouldn't say it was a river of life for sure. There was probably life in it, probably not life that I wanted in my body. But it was free water, and I had a choice to make. Am I going to use this pen and trust this pen that when I suck that through that, all those microbes, those 99 layers of microbe filtering whatevers were going to work or I was going to be in some pay bathroom somewhere and it wasn't going to be a pretty sight. But it's like that with the river of life. We come to the river of life, we're thirsty, and then we have this choice. Hmm. Do I really want to take of that river of life or don't I want to take it? of that river of life. Am I that thirsty? Because I know if I drink of that water, it's free, but it's going to cost me something. It's going to cost me my life. We trade. We trade one life, which is perishing, for another life, which is eternal, and yet we often want to keep the life that is perishing. doesn't make sense, does it? Well, we think about it like this, it doesn't make sense. But our flesh says, keep what we know. And the Lord says, that thirst that you have is never going to go away. Here's what Spurgeon said about that. He said, mark, this, mark thee, sinner. This passage says, whosoever. What a big word that is. Whosoever. There's no standard height here. It's any height and any size. Little sinners, big sinners, doesn't matter matter what your color is, sinners. Old sinners, aggravated sinners, sinners who have committed every crime in the whole catalog, whosoever. Well, that's just pretty inclusive, isn't it? Whosoever, come and drink. Don't disqualify yourself from the living water. Now, Genesis chapter 1, as I was reading that, how does it start out? In the beginning, verse 2. Now, the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over what? The water. Waters, the face of the deep. So we go from the end of the book with the living water, we come back to the beginning of the book, and we see the Spirit of God dealing with water. So that piqued my interest, and I said, where else in the book is God revealing himself in this area of providing for our thirsty souls? He created this whole thing, and he designed it. Exodus 17. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of Zin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? And why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there. And they grumbled against Moses, and they said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to make us and our children and our livestock die of thirst? And when Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with... I'm having technical difficulties. It just left. What am I to do with these people? Thank you. They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord answered Moses, Go out in front of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel. And take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. 
and I will stand there before you by the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. Thirsty people, and God provides water from the rock. How many thirsty people do we have here? There is a river of living water that is flowing with plenty of water. Plenty of water. Water for you, water for your family, water for everyone that you come in contact with. Ezekiel chapter 47. The river flowing from the temple after the glory fills the temple. Goes ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep, then they're swimming, verse 9. So where the river flows, everything will live. Where the river flows in your life, everything will live. The dead things will come to life. Fruit trees of all kinds are grown on both sides of the river, and their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit uh, fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and the leaves for healing. It's almost identical to Revelation chapter 22. You see God's continuity all the way through. Water in the beginning, water in the middle, water in the end. Thirsty people from every generation. Now what do thirsty people do? They try to fill their thirst with things other than the living water, don't they? When you're thirsty, I'm not going to ask you to give a survey here of what you like to drink when you're thirsty. We don't want to cause anybody to stumble here. But we have certain things that quench your thirst and certain things that don't quench your thirst. And certain things that quench your thirst at a certain time and certain things that don't quench your thirst at another time. So when I'm thirsty, there are days when I love a good, big, tall glass of cold milk. Bless God for this fast where I'm not drinking any big, tall glasses of cold milk or coffee. I am, let's see, how many days clean? Um, I think it's like a week and a half now. Life is different without the, the, the caffeine glasses on, you know, it's just different. But God gives us something that will quench our thirst every time. And yet sometimes we reach for other things. We reach for stuff. Oh, I'm so thirsty. Let me get this thing and buy this and put it into my life. Maybe that will quench my thirst. Uh, no. Uh, uh this person, surely this person will quench my thirst. Uh, no. Oh, 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 I know. I need another degree. That will quench my thirst. Uh, no. There is nothing that will quench that thirst but Jesus Christ. The river of life. The woman at the well, John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verse 10. Jesus encounters this woman at the well, and she is a woman that is trying to fill her life with all kinds of things. In her case, it was men. Been married five times, and the guy she's with now isn't her husband. Jesus knows this by the Spirit of God, and he, he takes her on this journey. And they're at a well, and he says something like, um, you know, talking about water and who's going to get the water and things. And then verse 10 if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Now here's a woman who is anything but pure. She's got issues. Much like us, right? And yet the Lord comes and brings us this conversation about living water. And he says, will you just ask me? And then she goes on to say, but the well is deep. And she, and she misses the whole point. Verse 13, Jesus answered and says, everyone who drinks this water 
will be thirsty again. He's pointing to the well. If you're drinking natural water and you're talking about natural things, you're going to be thirsty again. If you're trying to fulfill that longing on the inside with anything other than the Lord, you are going to be thirsty again. And some of you, as you look back at your life, you're saying, I tried this, I tried this, I tried this, I tried this. I am tired of trying things. The living water is what you need. Indeed, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty for more in 2016. Flood our lives, Lord, with your living water. Psalm uh, 42 says, As the deer pants for water, so my soul longs after you. That God-shaped vacuum in your life, it's only going to be filled by the living water. People need community. People need a place to belong. They need purpose. They need to have that opportunity to give the living water to other people. It's how we were designed. It's how we're designed. And yet we fill it with this and that and the other thing. Jesus says in John chapter 7, verse 37 and 38, after he was at the last and the greatest day of the feast, he stood up in a loud voice. He said, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, Rivers of living water will flow from within him. I think one version says, out of their belly will flow rivers of living water. I like that picture. Because it's not just about you. Boy, if we got that through our heads, church, it's not just about us. It's not about my thirst and it's not about me being having my thirst quenched there are people around us that desperately need a drink of cold water sometimes it's a actual drink of cold water and sometimes it is the life of christ flowing through us to a lost and dying and hurting and dry and cracked and bleeding world when i worked on on cars every day my hands were so brittle, cracked, bleeding, dehydrated. I was constantly putting lotion and cream and everything on them to try and keep them hydrated. And yet they would still split open and be bleeding because of lack of moisture. That's the world in which we live, folks. It's broken. It's bleeding. It's dying. And Jesus says, ah, oh, Come, receive the living water, and then out of you will flow a river of living water. He's shown us from the beginning of Scripture to the end of Scripture. It's about the living water. If we don't have enough to share with others, guess what? We're not soaked enough. Oh, Pastor, you know, I'm here today, and I just, man, I, my thirst is fine. I'm good. I'm good. This whole thing you're talking about here, I got that so like last year. I haven't even posted on Facebook, you know. It's, it's done. It's a done deal. And yet there's people that are, that are on your doorstep. Water. 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 No water here. Sorry. Only ties for sale. You have to get that somewhere else. Go see the pastor about that. That's what he gets paid for. I don't have time for that. Let, let me just give you a little, a little evaluation here. What does it look like to be spiritually dehydrated? Give yourself a little quiz. What does it look like to be spiritually dry? Needing desperately the river of life. When we get spiritually dry, lethargy sets in. You know what lethargy is? 
Lethargy is when all you want to do is be a spiritual couch potato and sometimes a physical couch potato too. You just like... Sorry, I missed that. What did you say? Is this ringing any bells? It's a sign of being spiritually dehydrated. Your strength for life begins to dwindle. You know, you used to be able to just go with fervor into whatever opportunity God presented and now you go but it's kind of in your own strength there's no vitality there I often say to my to my kids you know if you've ever seen my big fat Greek wedding you know how he had Windex you know everything was like Windex I'll put Windex on it you know well if anybody comes to me and says I have a headache ask my kids the first thing I say to them are, are you drinking enough water Okay, it's simple, but it's my go-to, all right? It's my Windex. Up, oh, drink enough water, and it'll be, you'll be good. I'm telling you, on this fast, that Keurig's getting just as much workout as it was before, but there's no little pod in there, you know? It's just like hot water, another glass of hot water, another glass of hot water, you know? It's like, I think in 21 days, I'm going to be like, oh, please, Lord, no more hot water. But I recognize my body is well hydrated. There's something about that. I have strength. Here's another question. Are your spiritual systems of prayer and worship beginning to shut down? You know, if you don't have enough water in your body, the body thirsts when it needs water. <laughs> I went on physiological.com or whatever it was, you know, researching like thirst. There were so many words on there that I couldn't even pronounce. I finally just gave up, and I was just like, at, the, the gist of it is God designed our bodies to thirst when whatever's in here needs water. That's the bottom line, okay? I think we get that. They had some big, long explanation, you know. I was hoping Brian would be here and we could, but it was, our strength begins to go when the water in our spirit starts to, You might be spiritually dehydrated if you lose your grace for people. Maybe you just notice you're you're a little short with people and you're and you're cranky and and it's just maybe you're spiritually dehydrated. Or or how about this one? You find sin a little more attractive than you did before. You might be spiritually dehydrated. You might need a drink from the, the river of living water. Maybe you make poor decisions based on the flesh rather than on the spirit. Those are indicators of spiritual dehydration. And can I encourage you in this 21-day fast that we're in that started two days ago and continues on to next uh, to the 20th? I would encourage you to drink deeply from the river of living water. Put some of those things on hold that are distractions or things that you've tried to fill that that thirst and just say no you know it's voluntary i said last week that we could either go on this journey of faith because of voluntary participation in what god wants to do or we could go on this journey of faith because circumstances cause us to have to live by faith personally as much as i don't like volunteering for the faith journey I sure like it better than the alternative. So wherever you are on this faith journey, I want to encourage you today to drink deeply from the river of living water. We don't know what 2016 is going to hold, but I'm thirsty. On Wednesday night, we're going to be right here in this sanctuary for about an hour and 15 minutes. And we are going to be worshiping, and we are going to be praying, and we are going to be listening, 
and we are going to be drinking from the river of living water. And who knows, if the Holy Ghost shows up and decides to flood the place, we might just be swimming in here for a while. That'd be okay with me. Right, Michael? We're okay with that. Take these days and don't just fast to say, oh, I fasted for 20 days. Woo, that was a long fast. I was religious. Seriously. If I'm going to fast, I'm going to get something out of it. Not just going to fast for form. I'm going to fast and say, Lord, fill me today with the river of living water. Change me today. Write down what he says. In a moment, we're going to sing the song in closing. Lord, I want more of you. Lord, I need more of you. Living water, rain down on me. Breath of life, come and fill me up. That's where I want to be. If, if when I read those um, signs of spiritual dehydration, there was one or two of them in there that you just said, wow, that's, uh, that's where I'm at. I'm going to invite you to come and drink. Some of us have had some wonderful time here at the altar today, but I'm going to open the altars up as we close. And Bonnie comes and we sing this song. And uh, this is my go-to song. When I, uh, when I have my moments or, or I don't know, it's, it's kind of like me and Jesus song. I, I just belt this thing out. I'll come in here to the sanctuary and I'll walk in and, and I won't be thinking about this song and I'll just come in and, and just start singing it. Who cares, you know, Lord, I want more of you. I get the words wrong. I get them all mixed up, but my heart's cry is, God, there's more out there that I want and I'm thirsty and I need more and I need you to just come and visit me today and, and fill me up and quench that thirst because I know I'm going to get thirsty tomorrow. You know, one of the things about thirst is it never goes away. Because you drank once doesn't mean that you're not going to drink again. You will if you are alive. Some of us just need to get over our self-righteousness of saying, well, I have it all together. I took care of business. And the Lord's saying, you're thirsty. I see you're thirsty. I know you're thirsty. Would you just come and drink? So as we sing, I want your soul to be satisfied. I want your thirst to be satisfied. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears, come. Let the one who is thirsty, come. And let the one who desires or wishes, whosoever, take the free gift of the water of life. I want to invite you today to come. Fill this altar with thirsty people as we sing this song together. Here's the picture that I saw. I don't know who this is for, but I believe it's for several people here. The song said, we lift our hands up. And I just saw a picture of cupped hands like this. And I sensed that there were some people that if you were to evaluate your life, you would say, I'm, I'm being obedient to the Lord as much as I know how, but I feel like I'm running out of gas. I'm doing it, Lord, and I'm doing it in faith, but I'm just not being propelled like I think that I should. And the Lord said, would you just take those cupped hands and put them out in front of you and receive the living water of my spirit. And then as you drink the spirit in, I will empower your obedience. So Lord, we lift our hands to receive from you 
And we then drink in the sustenance and the life that will propel us on that journey of faith and obedience. Lord, just empower your saints today with the fresh living water that will bring life to many, that will change this planet with the gospel, the message of the gospel of the kingdom. Do in us and do through us what is impossible for man, but is clearly possible for you. Give us that same water that Elijah drank that propelled him for 40 days through that desert place. Lord, we receive it today in the name of Jesus. Amen.